Okay, so I wanted to, let me turn off the weather, we're getting hit with a storm here. So I wanted to correct uh, something uh, that I said in a previous video about Garmin Pilot because they have fixed some of the problems that I was having over here. Um, first of all, when I went into the updates for Apple, for some reason, Garmin Pilot doesn't automatically update, and I'm not sure why, because everything else seems to update fine. Um, I had to actually go in and go to the, the App Center, click on Garmin Pilot, and then inside the Garmin Pilot section, there was an update menu that actually let me click on it because there was no sign that there was an update to Garmin Pilot prior to that. Um, but I do have the latest Garmin Pilot now, um, and I wanted to correct a couple things. Now, before I get started, um, if you go into the flight plan section, um, most everything is still pretty much the same here. If we go to airports, um, I'm, right now I'm looking at Thomaston. Um, this is all the same. Um, we've got, the, you know, the Unicom and all that, but there's no uh, no information in here on having the address. Um, I'll make sure. Yeah, there's there's nothing in here to to tell me what what the address of this of this place is. So I still have the same problem. The the airport screen is not nearly as nice as it is in ForeFlight. And you'll notice up here at the top, um, the section that's up there, all the text is very, very small. And so when you're trying to fly in the bright sun and the airplane's bumping around a little bit, it's really hard to see any of the stuff that's up there. And I'm also right now on an iPad Air, um, or really iPad Pro. So it's a lot bigger screen than my iPad mini. But the iPad mini is, you know, it's almost unreadable when you're flying in the airplane. So we have that. Um, one of the other things that I really liked about the, the 760 that we were looking at in a previous video is when, when I would go into the 760 and say I wanted to add a, a route here, um, the keyboard that came up was the whole screen and it had big buttons on it and it was much easier to to type on to to type in your airport identifier um, with this I'm you know I'm having to flip between the num numbers and the others and it's it's just not as easy to put that stuff in when you're using the the thing um, the other thing is like when I'm on the map and we click to open up our flight plan all of these uh, words and everything are just a lot smaller, especially on an iPad mini. Now, here is where I've, I've figured some stuff out. So I'm, I'm going to go back in here to the flight plan, and we're going to click over here and tell it to remove. Um, let's see how we did that. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I want to remove the approach so that puts KOPN back in as our destination so right now you can see that we're going from 6.2 Golf Alpha down to KOPN and everything is all lovely so now I want to shoot an approach into KOPN so what we're going to do is we're going to drop down our flight plan we're going to click on the PROC link over here select an approach we're going to do an ILS 3 approach now, at this point, if we go back over here, it says to, uh, I think, select on map is what we click on. And then what that does for me is that when I go in to select my initial approach fix, I can actually see um, what it is that I am trying to pick from. So I see my course coming in, and then I can pick what I want the actual uh, initial approach fix to be so now you'll notice that I'm on the ILS and on the ILS Yates is my where it says procedure turn there it's actually the Yates intersection and it's not showing me that as one of my possible entry points it also has a CF 30 over here that I don't even know what that is and then it is yeah, I don't even know what CF30 is. It's not an option for coming in. But we've got Vectors, Yates, Bolin, and Grant. So we got Grant and Bolin showing up, but the Yates is actually right there where it says procedure turn. So 
that is kind of a, a problem. But I'm going to go ahead and select Yates to go to. Now, in the previous version, what would happen is that it would still take me to Thomaston. But you'll notice, and I don't know why Garmin is doing this because I, I see no reason why you would tell it to load only in here because you would already do that in your 650. But I guess that they're just trying to keep it the same. But right now we have selected Yates as being our approach here. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top, I'm going to tell it to load. Uh, we'll start off with load only. And so what this does, and this is what was getting me earlier, is that now if I close this, you'll notice that it has the approach over here, but it, it's still taking me to Thomaston. And the reason is because I haven't actually activated it. So I've loaded it, but I haven't activated it. So if I come over here to the, the uh, procedure here, and I think I have to click on procedure, and then I can tell it to activate approach. Now at this point, if we look, now it has us going into Yates instead of the, the Thomaston Airport. So that was the primary problem with that. Um, that is fixed now. Again, we still have, you know, the airport thing is, is still a problem. And, you know, we've got other little oddities in, in here. But th this is functional, m much more functional than it was. So now the problem is that I want to display my map or the, the chart. And I don't remember exactly. I know I can click this guy here and open up the chart in here. And I'm trying to remember where you go to do that. Um, oh, it's right here. Oop, not that one, this guy here. And so then we're just gonna come up here and tell it that I want to see my charts. And so this selects the ILS runway 30, which is what we had selected over there. And so now I can run side by side. Um, and then I can also tell it to go to map and it'll put it over on the other side. And then from here, I can actually tell this to run my synthetic vision. And so now I've got my synthetic vision on one side and the map and everything over here on the other. So that is how you pull the chart up and how you get to your uh, synthetic vision so you can actually display everything. So it this is you know 10 times more functional than what we were getting on the 760. Um, and again, it's half the price. Um, this is an iPad Pro that we're on right now. The iPad mini is where I'm getting half the price. Um, the iPad Pro is a good bit more expensive than an iPad mini, um, but you do get a lot more screen real estate for doing everything. So what I'm gonna try to do now is I'm, I'm going to attempt to see if I can get this iPad Pro mounted in the airplane and try to use it over the next few flights and see if it does better. Uh, I think my big problem right now is just the fact that the iPad mini screen and keyboard and, and buttons and everything are just so much smaller that it's hard to do anything. But the one thing that I do like about you know Garmin Pilot is that they interface to the instruments in the airplane so I can do all my updates and all that kind of stuff through here and and it just makes everything a lot easier for, for dealing with all this stuff so that's kind of where we're at Garmin Pilot they still suck on the airport page um, other than that most everything seems to be working pretty good now so we're gonna go back to attempting to, to use Garmin Pilot for the next few flights and see you know, see if there's anything else that's buggy or doing anything wrong. But if I just wish they would fix their airports page, make it a little bit bigger font and, you know, where you can see things better. But um, again, the the big thing was the instrument approach stuff. And, and I kind of, I, I didn't, when I was in there looking at that flight plan and I, and I loaded that approach, I just never noticed the, um, oh, well, we already activated, um, but I never noticed the option up there for uh, loading and activating, which is the same thing on the uh, on the uh, 650 and 750. 
but I was so used to just loading the approach in four flight that I, I missed the fact that it actually had a load and activate. So that solves that problem and we're gonna we'll do some more videos once we start getting back in the airplane with it and seeing what is working and what's not.